Okay, looks like we're rolling. Greetings, dear Virgo. This is for you. That's you, Virgo. This is Tarot Illumination. This is your mini love and relationship kind of generic report for October 2018. You know the routines. You've seen lots of these videos. Uh, watch for your sun, moon, and rising. If they're all different, especially reinterpret to suit you. Cross watch for a significant other as well, okay? Also, if you want to go deep into the spirituality, please see the playlist on the monthly journey reports, okay? A separate playlist. <clears throat> We're going to be using the crucible spread, okay? Terra Legion Nation. It's about the understanding that there's you, Virgo, there's a significant other, and then there's a third entity, the relationship itself, which has its own identity, mission, purpose. Hopefully, you would be aware of this. In other words, what is the meaning and purpose of your relation? What are you guys doing together? Are, are you just trying to get out of each, what are you trying to get out of each other as opposed to what can you bring to the relationship? What are they bringing to the relationship? How can we serve you? How can you serve them? You know, building, investing in love as opposed to trying to as opposed to trying to deplete another of their assets, their love assets, so to speak. It's a completely different dynamic. Okay, so you could probably understand which is more healthy. Anyway, let's get on with that. Oh, before we, let, let's just do all the Astro Doodle stuff here. Okay, so this is the same doodle we've been using for everything for October, okay? The big news for the month is the massive Scorpio stellium up here. Uh, it's uh, over, looks like, well, I'll put it, I'll show you in a minute, but all these planets over here, Jupiter, Sun, Mercury, and Venus piling up in Scorpio. That's a lot of power. Deep, deep potential for deep soul healing at the levels of deepest intimacy that you wouldn't normally encounter in day-to-day -day life. This is like deep soul energy where there's hardly any language for it. It happens typically in the context of, a pre of an existing relationship where you're talking about soul merger energy. And what's happening is that you're kind of being forced, everyone's being forced to evaluate what's going on in the context of your loving relationships, because it's going to be amplified towards the end of the month with the Taurus Scorpio full moon, okay, October 24th, full opposite opposition to all this Scorpio energy. So it could be kind of a quaking, shaking moment for everybody, wherever this lands in your chart. Let's have a look. I'll just pull up some, wait a minute. Okay, so, well, these are the dates. Let me show you the dates. October 1st, Pluto goes direct in Capricorn, your fifth house of love and relationship. So you might feel the movement of tectonic plates going in your favor. October 6th, Venus goes retrograde in that Scorpio cluster, talking about perhaps soulmate reunions type of thing. The uh, Libra New Moon, uh, that's going to be in your second house, value and values. Uh, the Scorpio stellium, 10th to the 12th, starting to build up the full moon, October 24th, and the Scorpio stellium full bore towards the end of the month. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis on value and values uh, in reevaluation in love and relationship, okay? So one more thing, I just got to do this to honor the channel, honor you folks, the viewers, Terra Illumination membership, Love Tribe membership, okay? little button up here somewhere. Also, you can see all the links below, okay, in the description box. Personal readings, First Friday's healing events, shopping, books, satin silk scarf. See the links below. It's all there, okay, including the place, the link for how you get to the event, okay? So let's move on. So for you, Virgo, I pulled out a whole bunch of things. <laughs> it's kind of over the top. So please bear with me. Number one, let's go over here to number two, the Scorpio stellium. It's in your third house, okay? My feeling is that this is a huge chance to reevaluate what you are perceiving and transmitting through your physical antennae, typically how you would speak and listen, your words, your communications, uh, deep, deeper understanding of what is being communicated to you and from what you're communicating to others and learning what needs to be fi fixed and healed there. The energy is very harmonious for you. You're lucky, Virgo. The Scorpio is really delicious for you. Okay. So 
the thing I want to point out here, poor communications equal poor relations. Okay, so this could be a really good opportunity to do a lot of deep soul cleansing and healing in that part of your life, which would be, of course, we have it all prepared. Of course we do. Over here for you. Okay, this is your third house of uh, communications and linking and day-to-day -day engagement with uh, your, your people. Okay, so deep shifts and changes here. By the way, while we're looking at this map here for you, it looks, I know, it's weird, it's upside down, but here's the Libra new moon, new beginnings there in your value and, and values in relationships. Libra is relationships. So it's going to start there, and you'll see a lot more and understand a lot more towards the end of the month when you get the full moon, okay, Taurus moon, okay? So I hope this helps a little bit for, oh, I got a couple more things. Sorry, Virgo. <clears throat> okay, please bear with me. Please be patient. You've got Pluto and Saturn still over here in your fifth house, okay, of true love and, and romance, okay? So this is very deep, heavy energy, so you might not notice this on a day-to-day -day basis. Saturn is providing a lot of stability, but also a lot of learning and uh, reality checking, okay? It's still got a couple of years to go. Pluto is causing deep, deep transformational changes in that part of your life. So please allow this stuff to unfold gently. You don't have to panic about it right now because it's very harmonious energy for you anyway. So I think you can handle it just fine. Lastly, I should point out, Neptune is still here in Pisces in your seventh house, okay? First house, seventh house. This is your house of the other half, okay? The mate, the marriage partner, that, that person. And Neptune is right there. So, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to go deep. Neptune in Pisces, okay, it's absolutely beautiful for what it is, but of course, with, any, with every energy, there is the polarity. So it's a very long journey. Uh, I don't know why we're talking about it on this particular video. It's going for years. Uh, so what is it that is truly divine and beautiful and blessed in your one-on-one -on -one relationship? Okay, good question. More questions. What is truly fake, unhealthy, disabling, treacherous, deceptive in your one-on-one -on -one relationship? It's the same energy. One is the inverse of another. Who is sabotaging you? Are you sabotaging the other? Most of this is energy coming at you from another, the Neptune, okay? So please allow for that. That energy is impacting your relationship. Well, who is healing for you? Who is sucking your power? Who is like an angel who's there for you? Those are the kind of questions you could ask yourself, okay? All right, let's get on with the cards. Sorry about it took so long. Jeepers, man. I didn't mean to do that. I got kind of carried away. Cards are already shuffled. I'm just doing this for your witnessing, okay? So let's get on with it. All right, let's bless the cards, okay? Bless the cards, bless the cards. Bless you, dear Virgo. Bless Terra Illumination for the service. Bless the channel and the electricity for the chance to even do this at all. Okay, let's have a look. So what are you radiating here? This is the crucible spread, you'll see. What are you radiating, Virgo? What are they radiating? Okay, what's coming out from you deep at the soul, out from them deep at the soul, and at the core of the relationship itself? See, this is the crucible here. This is the structure in which you conduct the relationship, where you can intimate and separate, intimate and separate at very deep, profound levels, and then come back to full open expression. So you can be extremely individuated and extremely intimate, all in the context of a loving relationship without freaking out. What is the momentum here? Think of this as a living, breathing thing. What are you investing? What is the structure like? Is it porous and leaky? Is it solid and strong? Let's have a look. Circumstantial environmental energy around you right now. Think of it as the planets, whatever you want. Think of it as weather. You have the magician. So you have, uh, to me, it feels like you have all possibilities uh, open to you right now. Maximum power, maximum faculties. I'm seeing this as very advantageous for you because the most of the energies that we talked about are harmonious for you. If we put Virgo here on the horizon, the Scorpio energy, the Taurus energy, the Capricorn energy, the Neptune energy, dealing with it properly, 
That's a tremendous amount of power and resources at your availability uh, to try and evolve and grow here. So I see this as a really good, good, almost like a good omen for you to have this out there. So the question is, what are you going to do with all that power, all that talent, all those resources, all this information and new opportunity? What are you going to do? What are you radiating here? Okay, well, with the Eight of Pentacles, it looks like you've done a super, super job of uh, almost like preparing for this moment, knowing that you had to do a lot of work just to get to this point, but also knowing that it's a lot of work, okay, right now to get through October. There's there are all those energies we just talked about are very, very conducive to your deep soul evolution in the context of a loving relationship. But it does require work. It, it requires the investment of your time and energy. And it looks like you're already on top of it. It looks like you've already figured it out that you are going to do the work. You're willing to do the work. You're going to invest because you know that it's worth it. We're talking about love is as love does, okay? Evidence of love, not poetry necessarily or music and romance and potential actual facts, evidence. You want the real thing, okay? You want the evidence of love, okay? And you're willing to work for it. What's going on with them? Okay, happy, happy, happy card. Okay, so with the Ten of Cups here, it looks like you, Virgo, are you got lucky. <laughs> you might have almost like struck gold here, being with someone who represents what some people would see as a really almost idealized situation in love and relationship. Perhaps this is the Neptune in Pisces energy being reflected back to you. This is out there. This is possible. It might be extremely fragile. It might be very delicate, but it's there. It does exist in the form of a significant other for you, Virgo. So in some ways, Virgo, you've worked for this. You deserve this. You've got this. They are there for you. This is the energy of like, like like the happy family energy like like you could be so happy with this person in their world and they could be so happy with you in your world and it's a shared thing where everybody benefits it's not just what can you get what can they get it benefits everybody this radiates this turns into a glowing disco ball of love kind of aura okay it's good it's beautiful so what's radiating deep at the soul here? Okay, with the Seven of Swords here, we have to be very, very careful. So I feel that this is, again, to do with the Neptune and Pisces energy, because this energy is so beautiful and yet so fragile, and it could easily be squandered and wasted uh, through inappropriate or unevolved or unethical or, let's just say, shifty behavior that's really actually kind of inappropriate for you, Virgo. So if you feel that you are like threatened in some way, that this is too good to be true, that this isn't possible despite all the work, and you start to react thinking, I've got to protect myself. I might have to do things that I'm not proud of in order to do that. I'm just going to see what I can get away with and just hope this stays intact. Okay, well, that is a strategy, but it's a strategy of uh, based on fear of what could go wrong. How could it go wrong? I better get what I can now while I can, uh, just in case everything falls apart. Can you see how the energy of self-doubt would come in and how something so beautiful could instantly wilt just from the slight shift in terms of attitudes, perceptions, thoughts, and beliefs? You have to understand energy flows where attention goes. Think of our, our thoughts, our things, okay? They turn into words, which can turn into actions, which can turn into outcomes and consequences. So it feels to me like whether you know it or not, Virgo, you might be radiating energy that is self-sabotage without even knowing it, okay? And you might not know it until you experience what it's like to lose this energy, like when this wilts and fades, it could be directly proportional to how uh, inappropriate or unevolved or unhealed the depths of your soul have become. So it's very, very important that you are aware of this energy, that it's inside of you, and it is there. You need to own this energy so that it does not own you. 
This is like corrosive energy. It could be like rust, or you know, if you think of it like uh, understandable terms. I'm I'm talking about spirituality and how that affects your relationship, but like think of it like spiritual fungus, spiritual mold, spiritual rust, spiritual uh, mildew, uh, putrefaction that's not being dealt with properly, just trying to sweep it under the carpet or get away with it and pretend it's not there. If it's there, it needs to be dealt with. We all have a spiritual dumpster somewhere. And Virgo, uh, even with all the work you've done, there is more work to do. It's always so much work for Virgos. I know, I know, and I know what it's like. But uh, it's almost like it's your life mission, constantly refining, clarifying, purifying, improving the quality of your habits, replacing crappy habits with healthy habits. Okay, so let's have a look. What are they radiating over here? Okay, so with the tower here, my feeling is you might be relating with someone who uh, basically has all this already and it's happening for you and with you and in the love and in the relationship and because you guys are it, let's just say you guys have decided you're going to continue no matter what and as you continue and you grow and evolve through this little time period here you discover the things that are not working which is very good news the tower is a very powerful healing card because it blasts away anything and everything that is uh, inappropriate. You could almost say, almost say, like, they're almost like saying, "Let's bring it on." We need to like go deep here, dear angels. Please bring to me that which is mine, dear angels. Please take away from me that which is not mine. So it is spoken, so it is done. Let it happen. Boom, and then you rebuild uh, from all the raw materials left in the rubble. So that might be what's happening inside of them, with them, for them, because that's their journey, okay? And they're doing it in the context of a relationship with you, and it might be a little bit overwhelming, and you might sense it, Virgo, so you might be trying to avoid it and skate around it so that you don't have to deal with these massive deep soul convulsions here, cataclysmic changes. For instance, you could associate their energy of dramatic shifts and changes happening inside of themselves as perhaps something to do with the Pluto and Saturn energy over here in Capricorn, uh, where, where Pluto just demolishes anything and everything in its way that is no longer uh, appropriate. And there's no... It's not personal. Pluto's just doing what it does. Saturn's just doing what it does. The reality check police, they're basically saying, like, checking all the boxes. Like, you're checking all the boxes, seeing if you can, like, scoot through without having to do too much remodeling, spiritual remodeling, soul remodeling. But they are going through it. Uh, unquestionably, they are going through it. And I think that is being reflected back to you from your house of true love and romance here. So that be, could be quite heavy to handle. What about the relationship itself? Okay, with the Seven of Cups here, part of it, you have to be very careful. I think we're going back to Neptune. Uh, Neptune in Pisces here in your seventh house, where so many components of this love and this relationship are beautiful, ideal, idealized, almost to the point of impossibility. So it gets to the point where how can something so beautiful uh, end up so uh, confusing or difficult or challenging or uh, ungraspable, very difficult to grasp and hold. And so your abilities to understand this, you know, we were talking about your spiritual antennas in the third house communications. My feeling is that this is, an, and this is a time for a chance for you, remember this is your reading, it's not a couple's reading. The other person is not here. This is just for you, Virgo, and we are allowing their energy into the reading so that you get perspective on you. So, uh, and there is the structure in which this is all happening. So, I think what's happening here with the Seven of Swords and the Seven of Cups is that you're going to be exposed to the very, very deepest parts of the crucible of your, your relationship that are leaky, contaminated, grubby, uh, rusty, putrid, fungally, virally infected, 
to that can interfere and contaminate the beauty of this that is there for you from the other. And so it's kind of like putting the pressure on you to deal with it, okay? It's your reading, okay? So the beauty of this card also here is that it allows you to tap into the dreamlike nature of this relationship and see it almost like from heaven and look down. So if you could turn this whole, you know, stage here at Terra Illumination, tip it sideways so that you can look down into the bowl, you could see from above looking down, aha, I can see through this divine perspective where the leaks are, where it needs to be cleaned up. And that should give you a sense of relief, like, oh my gosh, there's a purpose and a meaning to this, because this could be very scary. You know, you could see this as a very scary reading for you, Virgo, if you wanted to. I don't see it. I see it as a beautiful opportunity, Jupiter and Scorpio, for deep soul healing, reevaluations. okay? Let's have a look at uh, prospects and momentum here. I want to check this. Okay, strength. So my feeling is that it's going to almost put you in a position where you're going to have to gather all your strength, all your like egoic strength, like the person that you see in the mirror, all, all your like characteristics and personality that other people see, they would call it like your egoic self or something. And grab every component of your power and then surrender and submit this to a divine purpose, okay? Over here where you take all of this and you don't try to exploit the situation or scoot around or use all this amazing power to avoid having to deal with this. And instead, you lose, use this as like almost like a magic wand, literally like a magic wand to get you into the perspective and understanding where you can see your relationship from up above. Blessed, a really beautiful perspective and how you can take this relationship to the next level where the relationship has the chance to glow and operate at these frequencies without being contaminated by whatever and anything that is uh, not evolved or spiritually has not been revealed in order for he the healing to occur that would impede the relationship. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to put all the responsibility on you, Virgo, for you to own everything here. You've got to own the leaks. In other words, everything that's not working, you need to own that because if you don't, that's what takes the whole relationship down. That rust, that fungus, that spiritual mold, those uh, unresolved conflicts, all of those things that you've been trying to avoid, they need to eventually be addressed, allow things to fall apart, then you can rebuild, and this will take the relationship to a higher standard, okay? You are being called to a higher standard here, Virgo. It might be challenging, it might be scary, it might be disorienting, but it has to be done in order to keep all this and justify all this, because this is beautiful. Together, you guys, you don't want to waste this, okay? Do not waste this. Thank you so much, Virgo. Thank you so, so much. It's been a pleasure to read for you. I hope this kind of made sense. Please uh, reinterpret however you need to and do the cross-watching and all that. Check the links. Do all the check links. Uh, become a member. Please become a member. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.